I show you an awful lot of boats on Aquaholic. What I never show you is how to actually go boating. So today Marianne and I are taking Smuggler's Blues out. That's my boat just behind us over here. And we're going to show you exactly what you have to do to take one of these boats out and go and have a great day on the water. Should we do it? Let's do it. Excellent. Very first job is to open her up and get these canopies off. Now these are pretty typical canopies for a boat of this style. And what they basically do is they just hook on down here like this and then they unzip and they come off in sections and the idea of this is that you can then have whatever canopy you want on so we're going to take it all off and it just unzips like that so that is the first section off now while i'm doing that you want to hop on board there we go marianne's going to nip into the cabin and sort a few bits out in there like putting a lunch in the fridge so if I give you that fella, that's yep. got the sandwiches in. There we go. Now I have got a full tour of this boat on my channel. So if you want to see everything on board of here, you can do that. Just look for the tour. In fact, I'll link to it at the end. But um, sandwiches are going in there. In the fridge. And while Marianne's doing that, I shall carry on taking these canopies off. Awesome. So what we've got now is we have the boat in bimini mode. So she's completely open all the way around. So we've got plenty of air coming through, but we've still got the sun top on, as you can see across here. However, we can take this further, and I think we will today because it's not super hot today. We can take the back off and just leave this section up, or we can fold the whole thing away, which I think is what we're going to do. And then that just folds back and wraps around and then we have a cover that zips over that to keep it all tidy. So that is the canopy dealt with and you tend to find that each boat they're a little bit different and what you develop is a system for what works best. But once you get the hang of it, they're pretty quick to deploy. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go. Last couple of safety things to do. One is life jackets. Now we have these life jackets, they're auto inflation life jackets. We always have these in the cockpit for people and make sure that they fit people. But normally if we're out just the two of us and it's pretty quiet out, we usually wear them because there's no reason not to really. So Marianne is going to show us how to put on a life jacket. It goes on basically like a waistcoat. And then there are what are lovingly called crotch straps. <laughs> and they go up and in. Now these are really, really important because if you fall in the water without those, it's very easy for life jackets just to ride up. And that's it, that's how it's worn. Um, now this is auto inflation, there's a gas canister in here. If Marianne was to fall in the water, that would inflate. And even if she were unconscious, it would roll onto her back, keep her head above the water and keep her safe till we can go and get her. Excellent. I'm going to put mine on. We're good to go. Just a couple of things to do at the helm. So, up here, I keep this towel just to keep the sun from bleaching the instruments and other bits and pieces so that can come off as a cover for the same reason over the navigation screen. I'll show you that in a bit more detail once we're out and going. And this is very important because without this we can't listen to Jimmy Buffett while we're cruising. And then the key to start the boat is exactly like a car. Ignition on and then turn it again and we're running. A couple of other things to do, we've got a VHF radio on this boat, this is, it allows us to communicate with other boats or the Coast Guard if necessary, so that's a safety and communication device. Also I've got this little fella, this is an EPIRB, if I'm on the boat on my own I click this to myself and that is a self-contained uh, distress beacon, basically it uses the satellite system if you have a problem you can fire that off and it lets the distress organisations know that you're in trouble and where you are. Finally then we have a bow thruster on this boat, that's this little fella here, so we push that twice to switch that on. What that does, you might be able to hear it, it actually pushes the bow of the boat sideways so when you're manoeuvring, you probably hear it there. You see the prop wash? That just helps you when you're manoeuvring. Don't really need it on this size boat, but it is a, certainly a useful thing to have. Now people often ask whether you can handle a boat like this on your own, and the answer to that is definitely you can. So I'm going to do exactly that while Marianne films, just to show you. So I'll put the shoes on first of all. 
Now the way that we tie this boat up, we have fixed lines on the pontoons, and that means that we can just unhook them. I'll show you on this one just here. That literally just pulls off like that, and this is on the pontoon. We've got more ropes on the boat then that we can use if we go somewhere. these come off depends on which way the wind is blowing and how the boat is configured. In this case the wind is blowing that way, so it's trying to take the boat that way. So this is doing most of the work, so this will come off last and the bow will come off first. Now of course once you've got these off you have to be aware of the boat drifting away. That's obviously what they're there to do to stop that. So all you need to do is just give a bit of hand on the boat and try and make sure it's not going anywhere. These are so light you can literally just move these around. It's three tonne boat, of course, it's three tonnes supported by water, so it's crazy to move them around. Pull them in, you can do whatever you need to do. And at the back here, this one can come off. This is what's called a spring line. I might explain these another time in a bit more detail. We are now completely unhooked. So, shut the back door. So this is the throttle and the gears, so if we nudge that forward, we're now into gear ahead and we're moving out. We're back into neutral, that bleep is a neutral bleep to let you know. Because these boats are here, what I'm going to do is actually turn to the right, we're going left, but by going into a stern, it now spins the boat pretty much in its own space. So we're not getting anywhere near those guys over there. And then we can go ahead now with the helm down the other way and we're well clear. boating. Easy as that. And one thing I've not done is switch this navigation screen on, so we want power for that. Push that one there. There we go. And this is a compass under here, so we'll have that off again. That's to save the sun from damaging it over long exposure. And the other thing that's important to do is close this door so that nobody can accidentally tumble down it when we're out and running. And here we go, on a beautiful day. Now there is one more job, Marianne normally does this, but again, just to show you it can be done. And that is to take these fenders off. These are the things that protect us from damaging the boat against the pontoon. So these either unhook or untie. We just drop them in here. This one we don't need to untie. That'll just fit in there neatly. And the boat, as you can see, is just drifting, but because of the way the wind is blowing, it's keeping us off of there. This one ties completely. What we do have to do while we're drifting around like this is just make sure that we're not going to be in anybody's way. No, we're okay. There's two more fenders, one up here, and these I take in but leave on the side deck. Now, some people just leave these out, but it's a very scruffy way of going boating because they bounce around on the side of the boat. It's okay on a river, no good on the sea. That's it. Back into gear. Bit of helm and we're away. This is Torquay Harbour. You can see the boats going out the harbour entrance over there, that's where we're heading. Now in terms of sort of rules of the road, generally if two boats are approaching, you alter course to starboard, that's to the right, and that's why when people are manoeuvring in harbours, he would normally stay on that side and I would normally stay on this side, so we're not even in that position in the first place. And people are generally pretty friendly and wave at each other. Like that. So these fellas here, you'll see these around the place, that is a red marker, that is a green marker, and the idea is you keep your red on the left hand side and the green on the right hand side, and you'll think, well you got that completely wrong then, but of course it depends which direction you're going. They always configure them for when you're coming into the harbour, so that they're correct as you come in, as you come out they're the other way around. Having said that, I do believe that in America they do it the other way around, so if you're both in America, check first, don't take my word for it. So this is Tor Bay. It's a very beautiful boating area. Very sheltered most of the time. You've got just a little bit of swell, but nothing that's going to trouble us at all. Barry Head is off that way. And our plan for today really is just have a little potter out. It's currently quarter to one, so we're just going to go and find a nice bay, drop anchor, and have a bit of lunch. Nothing too adventurous.
What I'm doing at the minute is just waiting for the engine to warm up a bit. I don't like to come out and give it a load of throttle. I like to let the temperature build in the engine. And while we're doing that, we'll set up the GPS. So that just requires switching to chart. And that will now give us, we can zoom in and out. It's a little bit like a navigator on a car. I don't know how clearly you can see this in the bright sunlight. So maybe we'll do a video on this another time. But if I do that, you should be able to see where this little boat here, and this is Torbay around here. And this will give us it's basically a, a, an admiralty chart. So it's showing us things like where shallow water is. There isn't much of that in Torbay. Uh, rocks, that kind of thing. So very useful thing to have switched on. Um, you can get paper charts as well. So always useful to have those as backup, which we've got also. So I'm going to pick the speed up a little bit. So what I'm doing now is just keeping a check on the gauges. So here, this one is oil pressure. So that wants to be well up around here as it is. This is water temperature, that's the coolant in the engine, so that, once we're up and running at speed, should be pretty much vertical and stay there. Over here is this volt, so this is showing that the engine is charging the batteries, which is very important. And this finally is revs like you would have in a car. So it's all pretty straightforward. I'll run through your switches in a bit as well, but I won't bore you with that right now. And what I'm waiting is for this temperature just to creep up a little bit further, up past 70 degrees, and then with a bit of heat in the engine we can start to open the throttle and get going. At the moment we're cruising at about seven knots so give you an idea what seven knots looks like. Okay so we've been running about 15 minutes now since we left the berth about five minutes out at sea. See the temperature now is up around 80 so nice and warm we can start to pick up the revs so just ease the throttle forward and then what you'll see if you look out on the back is the boat coming up onto the plane. And there we go, planing. Now what do I mean by planing? Planing is basically when the boat has picked up enough speed that it lifts up on top of the water and skims across it. So it's much faster and much more efficient. Not all boats plane more the performance boats like this one. So we're cruising now, pick up the res a bit more. This is a nice cruising speed for this boat, so it's about 2,800 RPM on here. And that is about 23 knots. Flat out this boat will do over 30, but that's a lovely cruising speed. Okay, so we're just dropping into Broad Sands Bay for lunch. This is about a 10 minute spin across the bay. We're gonna have some lunch here, chill out for a bit, and then head on a bit further around the coast. Now, there's no speed limit out in the main part of the water. When you get closer in, you can see these little fellas here. These are five knot marker boys. When you go inside of those, your speed needs to be down to five knots, which is exactly where we are now, before you reach them. Just give you an idea. That's the difference in speed. And the reason for that, it's a safety thing. So people are swimming off of the beach, then uh, it means they're not going to encounter any fast boats. So jet skis, that kind of thing, they should all stay outside of that when they're going fast. Of course, they can come inside if they slow down. Now, the reason we've chosen this particular bay is because the wind direction is off the shore here. So it's actually blowing out from here, which means the closer we get in towards the shore, the more sheltered it gets, the more of a windbreak we get, the calmer the water and the less wind we have to contend with. So it's a nice spot just to tie up where it is hopefully pretty sheltered. 
So what do we need to be aware of when anchoring? Well, the important thing when we're this close inshore is depth. And on here, there is a depth reading, that top one there, you can just see hopefully. So we've got four and a half meters. This boat will float in about just over a meter of water, but obviously you don't let it, let it get that narrow if you can help it. So comfortably, I reckon three meters is about as shallow as I really want to be. You have to be aware of any rocks or anything around, they should show up on the chart anyway. And you can see actually, this is us, this little boat down here, and the blue bit is deep water, and the green bit here is the bit that dries out at low water. So I think we're about there, and Marianne's going to give us a lesson in anchoring now. <laughs> Let's go and have a look. If the anchor lives down here, they can lift up its little hatch and secure it. This little doodah, like that, so it doesn't fall down and chop my fingers off. And there's a little rope here which is also holding it in place. That's just a safety lanyard, basically it doesn't need it, but it's a backup, so if the winch ever failed, the anchor wouldn't launch itself. Okay, and here's the little uh, controller for the anchor, and it's got two buttons, one says up, one says down, so even I can control this, and we want to put the anchor down. So at this point, I usually ask the skipper how much anchor chain he wants out. Well, we're about four meters, we want about three times that, 12 meters, there's um, 20 meters of chain, so about half the chain. Okay. I want half of that to go down, so About half the chain. Excellent, well done. So we had the wind, you can see the ripples in the water blowing us this way. So what should happen if that is dug in is you should see the boat now spin head to wind, and that's how you know the anchor has dug in. You can also see on the chain itself starting to pull at an angle which means the boat is pulling on it so for it to pull on it the anchor must be dug in there's a rough rule of thumb the wind is blowing the back of the boat around the front of the boat is literally anchored so the back is swinging around so that it points into the wind like a weathercock perfect yeah good job thank you very much no problem nice hat <laughs> mila. mila is that how you pronounce it apparently so that's yeah. amazing You'll soon learn. <laughs> there we go, you can see how the anchor chain is set now. And that is us parked for lunch. Now it is possible for anchors to drag, so you do have to keep a bit of an eye on it. Um, in these sorts of conditions, it really shouldn't be a problem, but if it's strong wind or you haven't got enough anchor chain out, then it can actually drag across the surface. So it's worth just keeping an eye exactly where we are, which is just off of this headland here, and engage the kind of distance we are from the shore and just keep an eye on that and uh, make sure that we don't move. If we do, it's just a case of putting the anchor up and re-anchoring. Good, should we have lunch? Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Maybe a nice cup of tea. Oh, yes. Now, the reason the engine is still running is a couple of reasons. Firstly, when you're running the anchor winch, it's a really high load item. You don't want to flatten your battery. So if you leave the engine running, of course, it keeps the batteries topped up as it's being used. But the other reason is also because the engine's been running fast and hot, turbo spinning, it's best just to give it five minutes just to cool down a bit before you switch it off while the cooling water is still circulating around it. So that's been running for about 10 minutes now while we've put the anchor down. So again, exactly like a car. Engine off. Peace reigns. And now what we normally do is take our life jackets off because if we fall off here, well, we'll just clamber back on again. Now on this boat, we do have a cockpit table, but it's a big, clumbersome, heavy GRP thing. And I don't like having it out there most of the time. So I've taken that off the boat, and then when we're having lunch, all we do is we take the table from down in the cabin. You can see that sits on a single leg. And then the leg comes out like so. And there's another socket for that out here. And then this is the table. Voila, fine dining. Now these are very important fellas. You wanna guess what these are? I'll show you. These go on the tablecloth so that if we get a bit of breeze, it won't blow away. Nifty, huh? See what's going on in the cabin. Okay. Marianne is making a cup of tea. Absolutely. It's all very civilized. I like your mug. Yeah, look at that. 
That's like those alcoholic ones, only better, isn't it? Yeah, I really like this guy. Amazing videos. Really? Yeah. Quality. <laughs> yeah. Pretty but, sexy too, isn't he? I, I think so, actually. Yeah. I mean, a, do you watch his videos? Because he is he is the man. I, I don't tend to. I get very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. I can see why. Now, while Marianne's making a cup of tea, I'm going to show you something clever with a chart plotter, because what this does is it records a track as we go along. If I zoom right out, let's go to there and there. There, you can see, hopefully, that pink line is where we've been. You can see where we've been in here before and anchored. But the reason I mention this is because if we zoom right in, you can see where we're drifting around at anchor. This is zoomed really tight. So as long as we stay around this little squiggly zone here, we're not drifting. If this then starts to draw a line, Oh, we didn't want to do that. There we go. And disappear off down this way when we've got the anchor drifting. So this is quite a useful tool just to make sure that we're not actually dragging the anchor. But as I say, you can also do a visual check and we are where we should be. And one of the amenities we have on this boat is pressurised water. So there's a water system. It's fed from a freshwater tank which we fill up in the marina. And that means that where the toilet and the sink is, we've actually got proper hot water. This water's heated from the engine. So when we were running along earlier, it was putting the cooling water around a hot water calorifier and that means that with a bit of soap we can wash our hands with lovely warm water just like we would at home and check out my posh toiletries look at this this is the white company and this stuff smells delicious recommend it coffee ready yeah ready to head on up have some lunch awesome water and our lunch is in this little fella oh here we go in here are the sandwiches lovingly prepared by me that's yours thank you very much this is boating it's not bad is it could be worse you floating your boating look paddle boards kayaks uh, is that a little rib there? Yep. A little power boat. Get skiing. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Many different ways to go boating. And the thing is, as I always stress, you know, all these guys are on the same bit of water. You don't need to be on a boat like this. You can be, and it's great. Or you could be on a bigger boat, and that's fantastic. Or you could be on a paddleboard. You're still on the same bit of water, having the same bit of fun. It's all different budgets as well, isn't it? All different Amazing. budgets. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can speak. <laughs> Beautifully done. Thank you. Now, in case you're wondering, or indeed you ever want to make me a sandwich, what I've got here <laughs> is cheese and marmite, delicious, and cheese and ham with salad cream. Fantastic. Marianne's having cheese and ham. Delicious. Oh, is there anything better? Out of this world. <laughs> in fact, you don't actually technically need a boat at all. So we have had lunch and now we are sitting on one of our favourite parts of the boat which is the swim platform because we're right down at water level and we can just enjoy this amazing view. We like to refer to this as the beach club because that's what they call them on super yachts but uh, it's probably being a bit grand for my little boat but nonetheless the effect is the same right down on our own private beach and if we're feeling really adventurous really really adventurous okay that's still cold <laughs> actually that's not too bad when you get used to it Mm, not yet. Not yet, okay. Swimming starts July? Uh, yeah. yeah. Swimming starts in July. 